Hey, what's up everyone? Today is Tuesday, which means that it's time for another live Q&A. As always, I'm your host, Paul J. Lipsky, and today I'm here to answer any questions you have about dropshipping or different ways to make money online. I've made a lot of videos over the past five or six years here on this channel, mostly about dropshipping onto different marketplaces. We've tried eBay, we've tried Amazon, we've tried Facebook Marketplace. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And if you have questions about what I talked about, Come to one of these live streams. I do them every single Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time and ask questions. And I will do my best to answer those questions for you. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Normally, I start off the week with some news that is relevant for us drop shippers. But honestly, nothing much really happened over the past week in terms of drop shipping news that I thought was really important to talk about. The only thing I'll say is let's just give a little bit of an update. Last week during the live stream, I mentioned that some eBay users noticed that on their phones, when they tried to list items onto eBay, they saw a new little icon that would actually uh, use AI to generate for them a description of their product based on the title alone. That was something that eBay never really announced, but now they've come out and said, yes, we are testing AI on eBay. And I'm sure it's going to come to other parts of eBay in the future as well. Personally, when I'm listing items, and this is true for a lot of drop shippers, we use software like AutoDS. So that's just grabbing the description from like Walmart or Amazon and using that description. And usually that description's really good. Now, if we're listing items from some other marketplaces that are that uh, where the items come from China, like AliExpress or CJ Dropshipping, a lot of times those descriptions aren't very good. So while most dropshippers don't take the time to actually create a new listing for them, or sorry, a new description, if we have AI that does it for us, that's gonna save us a lot of time. And in fact, we've already been doing this. I just use chat GBT, like it's on a separate tab, obviously it's not built into AutoDS or eBay. And I go over there and I say, hey, write, write me a product description for this item. And it does, and it's really, really good description that's very, very nice to read. So I just copy that and throw it into the description for the item. But I only do that in cases where the description is quite frankly sucks and it's not very good. Otherwise, it's just not really worth the time to do that for every single item. But other than that, that's all the drop shipping news that I have for this week. So let's get into the comments and questions now. So we have George here saying, hi, hey, Paul, is there any other retail stores besides Walmart and Home Depot to use for drop shipping onto Facebook Marketplace? Yeah, so Facebook Marketplace is a great place to drop ship to, and there's plenty of places that you can drop ship from onto Facebook Marketplace. So you mentioned Walmart and Home Depot, which are great choices. You can also use Amazon as long as you don't use Amazon Prime. If you use Amazon Prime to drop ship from, Amazon will shut that account down. So you can only just use regular Amazon for drop shipping. The other places that we've had a lot of luck with is eBay, drop shipping eBay to Facebook Marketplace. You always wanna be careful on Facebook Marketplace because they do require you to upload a tracking number and upload it on time. So if a supplier is not giving you a tracking number consistently within that time frame then you're gonna run into an issue. So I wouldn't use that supplier. So that's why we stick with the more reputable ones. And even though eBay, they have a lot of different sellers. So it's not like Walmart or Amazon. You know, when you buy something from Amazon, a lot of the items, most of the ones that we buy are fulfilled by Amazon, meaning Amazon's the one who's going to ship it out from their warehouse. So if they say it's gonna come in one day or two days, there's over a 95% chance that it will arrive when they say it will, which is just a day or two. But with eBay, you know, you don't really have that guarantee because there's so many different sellers. It's not like it's fulfilled by a major company like Amazon. But eBay is built on the review system. So you can check out the reviews for the seller. It will tell you, hey, we're gonna get this item out to you in a couple of days. We'll get you a tracking number in a couple of days rather. So we can rely on that and it's been just fine. So those are some other ones I would look at as well. Um, but again, just be careful that you don't use a supplier that's not giving you tracking numbers on time. Um, 
Kared says, hey, I have Norton antivirus on my laptop. I just noticed that it comes with a VPN. Should I turn it off whenever I'm working on Facebook Marketplace or eBay? Also, should I turn it off when working on Zeek or AutoDS? Yeah, um, you don't need to turn it off for Zeek or AutoDS, but I would turn it off for Facebook Marketplace and eBay. So this whole VPN kind of debate or confusion, um, it's, it's all about, so eBay and Facebook Marketplace they are systems built on trust, right? The customers trust that when they order something from those marketplaces, someone's actually going to ship them the items. But that doesn't work if the people on the platform are just scammers and things like that. So one of the ways that like eBay protects against that is they're gonna look for any suspicious activity on your account. If they see too many red flags, they'll suspend you your account until you're able to prove that, no, you're a real person, you're not gonna scam anyone. Usually you have to chat with them, send in some documentation, it's a huge pain. So what are some of those red flags? Well, th there's a number of them, but for what we're talking about, if they see you're using a VPN and the commercial VPNs like NordVPN, and I would even probably guess Norton Antivirus, they know what those IP addresses are. So if they see traffic coming from that IP address, they're a little suspicious, not enough to, to shut down your account, but if they see too many of those red flags, they might shut down your account. So that's why I don't use a VPN when I'm accessing eBay or Facebook Marketplace, unless I'm using a dedicated static VPN. So I get those from IP Burger, and the reason those ones are okay or I, I found them to be okay is because they're not shared. No one else is using that IP address. So these companies don't know that the that the IP address is associated with a VPN. So that's the only way I would use it. But in your situation, because it's a commercial one, a Norton antivirus, I wouldn't use it for eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Uh, but it doesn't matter for Zeek or AutoDS. All right, Odimas, get in their store up in a couple of days. Go for it. Excited to hear that. Hey, what's up, Robert? All right, yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, we made a transition a few months ago, moving all my courses, all the dropshipping courses from web one website over to another. There is, you know, it was pretty seamless, all things considered, but people who weren't kind of, uh, uh, who joined the course maybe last year and hadn't logged in for a while because they're just busy running their stores, they might've come back and said, hey, wait, I'm not able to log in under my old bookmark. So we, we get a couple of emails here and there from people saying, hey, I'm not able to log in. So pretty easy to take care of. You can just email us if that happens to you. Ship Bob. Um, Ship Bob. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. It sounds really familiar, to be honest. Um, let me take a look at it again. Where is my window? Ship Bob. So I'm gonna look this up real quick because it sounds really familiar but I don't remember what it is, to be honest. There's a lot of stuff that comes through. Ah, uh, yeah, I've never used it. It's some sort of alternative to maybe like, yeah, I don't know what, I don't exactly know what it is, but yeah, I'm not familiar with Ship Bob. Sorry, Robert. I can look into it later though. JMC says, hey Paul, when will you make your discount available again? I'm struggling with my finances, but really need to get your guidance. Please help. Yeah, so I I, I occasionally discount my courses. I lasted it for, for Memorial Day, but I don't have any plans right now for the next one. So the next time that the discount's available, I will send out an email to people who haven't joined the course if you want to take advantage of it. But... Like I say, when I send out those promotions, when the discount's available, it's available. When it's gone, it's it's truly gone. Like I don't, I can't, I don't make exceptions to that. Um, that's like, um, I want to be true to my word and for everyone to be fair to everyone who did join during when the discount was available. Cyber Player says, what are your thoughts on CJ dropshipping and would you recommend it assuming you've heard of it? Yeah, of course I've heard of CJ dropshipping. CJ dropshipping is, I have been experimenting with it over the past several months now, 
I really like it. I've been drop shipping from CJ drop shipping. It's like a lot of drop shipping in there. Um, and I really enjoy it. I just literally yesterday finished recording a video about it. I'm editing it right now. And I think it's going to be available actually in two weeks because next week we're going to have a very special guest on my channel to talk about Amazon FBA. You probably know him, Steve Rakin at Rakin Profit. So that video is coming out next week. And then CJ Dropshipping video will come out the week after that. So yeah, CJ Dropship is a great supplier to work with, um, having a lot of luck with them. Uh, Dropshipping from both the US warehouse and the Chinese warehouse, which is something I never thought I would do, but um, it has been working really well. Odima says, is Facebook shop mainly for branded products or is it also for unbranded products? It's for both. You know, we, we have no problem selling from either one of them. So what Odima means is like, should you only sell I don't know. I always have trouble even thinking of branded products I sell because, you know, we don't sell the major brands that most people have heard of. So we don't, like, I don't sell like Nike clothes, but um, that's an example of like a branded item as opposed to a more genetic, ge sorry, generic shirt. Uh Gerardo says, I want to use or want to get Amazon's credit card for the cashback benefits, but apparently I have to be a Prime member, but you have recommended to not use Prime, Amazon Prime for dropshipping. So first part of that, yeah, we don't use Amazon Prime for dropshipping because again, they'll shut down your, um, your account for doing that. But you can still use their credit card. So let me pull it up. The Amazon Prime, oh, sorry, I just did it. Amazon Chase credit card because there's still benefits to doing it, to using it. Um, let's see what it says because they're always changing things. Uh, okay, so this is the Amazon Chase credit card. And... Let's see what it says. Oh, why isn't it telling us? Oh, explore the benefits. Okay, so where is it? So it's 5% back if you have Amazon Prime, but I thought it was 2%, saying 1% without Prime or maybe it was 3%. I don't know. That's why I never try to do things on the fly because there's so much to read through here. But I thought you got two or three percent, but I get, maybe it's only one percent. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, all right, I'll have to do more digging into this because I thought it was a bit more than that, but I could be wrong or they might have changed it. Yeah. But that's where you would look. Just look this up and um, you can get some more information about it. Hey, what's up, Miss Mia Mia Meow? What's up? Gerardo says a customer wants to return a part for a stove that he claims doesn't fit. And eBay already approved it. So I'm assuming they didn't buy the whole stove from you. They just bought this part from the like this part from you is what it sounds like. The problem on my end is that Amazon doesn't accept returns on this item. Do I take a L or not? That's unusual that Amazon won't take a return. I would, I would try to return it again and say um, that it, that it's inaccurate item description because if the item doesn't fit this, the type of stove that it's supposed to fit, well, that's not your fault. That's, that's not the fault of anyone who bought it. So you should try to return it again and say like, this was an inaccurate item description. And then they should approve the return for you. Odima says, can I conveniently drop ship on Facebook shops and Shopify without using AutoDS? So AutoDS is of course a software that we use to automate our drop shipping stores. And it can list items onto Shopify for you. It can list items onto Facebook shops for you as well. And, it, and it, it automates everything like repricing and restocking, even orders in some situations. Mm. 
without it or a similar software, you're going to be doing all that manually yourself. So yeah, you can do it. It's just going to be more manual work for you. Or you can look at uh, an alternative software if, if it's if if that's what you're doing, that's what you want to do. Yes. Yeah, so, so in that case, um, th then that's what I would tell Amazon. You know that it doesn't fit the the stove that it's supposed to fit, or whatever it was. Yeah, the stove that it's supposed to fit. That means that the the description's not accurate then. John says, I want to use Walmart, but won't the buyer receive it in a Walmart box and a receipt showing the lower price paid? I've made so many videos about this already. So definitely check out those videos. In fact, the video coming out Thursday of this week, so in two days, is is more about Amazon. But in that video, I talk about some of the problems with drop shipping from Amazon. And with and one of the problems I talk about is the logo on the box and the invoice in the box. So it's still going to be relevant to you because the same the same answer applies, which is that this doesn't matter. Walmart, when they ship boxes to customers, they don't include invoices in the box. So you don't have to worry about that. And yes, it says Walmart on the side, but customers don't care. We just don't see customers care. And my theory is they get a Walmart box, but they probably just think we're reusing old boxes we have, or we just bought our boxes from Walmart because you can buy boxes from Walmart that you can use to ship customers their items so i don't see that as being an issue because it hasn't been have i used blue care express on facebook shops uh yeah when no no we haven't we've used it on ebay i've used things like track taco on facebook shops yes exactly miss elaine miss elaine says paul you said you can't use amazon prime to drop ship does that mean you have to create a new account that isn't a Prime account? Yeah, that's what you would do. And that's free to do. So no problem there. I have, I have a couple, a few Amazon accounts. Um, and I access them all from the same computer, same IP address, and haven't had any issues with it. Let's see. Okay. JMC says, can we use Facebook Marketplace from any country? My personal Facebook account does not have a lot of features like shipping, shop now, or buy now, et cetera. I am from an Asian country. Please help me. Yeah, so if you want to drop ship onto Facebook Marketplace, you can only really do it if you're here in the United States where I am. And that's because the way that we are able to do drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace is because when we list items for sale, it give us, gives us an option. It says, hey, how are you going to get the customer their item when they want to buy it? You can either do local delivery, which is the traditional way of doing it, where you actually meet up with someone and you hand them the item and they hand you cash. That's obviously not going to work for drop shipping. So the alternative that's available to us in the United States is we can select the shipping option. And with the shipping option, if someone wants the item, they buy it from us directly on Facebook. And once they do that, then the payment is done through Facebook. They enter their credit card information into Facebook. Facebook tells us, hey, you have a sale. Then we order it from our supplier, enter in the buyer shipping address, use our credit card information, and the supplier will ship it directly to the Facebook customer. But without that shipping option on Facebook Marketplace, it's hard to do. Yes, you can send people to your Shopify store, and that does work, but it's not going to be the, the um, what's it called? The um, conversion rate isn't going to be as high as if they can just purchase right on Facebook Marketplace. And that's why Facebook Marketplace dropshipping is really geared or aimed toward people here in the United States. And doing stuff like this, I haven't seen anyone have success with this. So JMC is saying, hey, can I just create a face, fake Facebook account using a VPN in the United States? I haven't seen that work for anyone. People try. Uh, the first problem is that even if I were to create a fake Facebook account here in the United States without using a VPN, you know, from a legitimate 
you know, US IP address and all that stuff. Even if I was creating a brand new real Facebook account, the shipping option isn't available on new accounts. But certainly doing things like using a VPN or VPS, I just haven't really seen people have much luck with that. Hmm. Is AliExpress good for expensive drop shipping items such as furniture, sofas, and mountain bikes? You know, I would avoid it. Um, those items come from China. The return rate can be, sorry, the return process can be pretty tough with them. Um, that's why like even with CJ drop shipping, I'm sticking with like cheaper items because if, if someone wants to return it and it's too much of a hassle for me to return it, um, I will just refund them either partial or full refund on that item. Um, yeah. And avoid the expensive stuff. Um, Jonathan says, I got a copyright warning from eBay for an Amazon listing. Will I get this warning if I start selling and using stock images from Home Depot since it's not a marketplace? You could, it's called Vero, V-E-R-O, Verified Rights Owner Program. And these are basically, if you list up items using stock images from a company that doesn't want you to do that. So the good news is that if you're doing product research using Zeek Analytics, if one of those Vero items comes up, it will tell you, hey, this is a Vero item. And let's say Zeke Analytics misses it. If you list the item with AutoDS, AutoDS will tell you, hey, this is a Vero item. And my advice is if it is a war if it warns you that's a Vero item, don't list it. It's not worth the risk of that happening at all. Oops. <laughs> All right. Stucco says, what are the top three marketplaces to start right now? I'm very knowledge knowledgeable about dropshipping automation and had a virtual assistant before. What marketplaces would you recommend for someone like me? I've been away. Well, no surprise to anyone who watches this channel. The two that I would recommend are eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I've tried others. I've tried dropshipping on other marketplaces. And by far, those two are the two I've had the most success with, and that I also thought were the easiest to get started with, especially without having like a great amount of resources to get started, aka a lot of money to get started. So those two, without a doubt, for drop shipping, I would go with. The third marketplace, I would say, would be Amazon, but I wouldn't do drop shipping there um, unless you're a much more advanced seller because it is difficult, it, it, there are challenges. Amazon, there's there's like a 50% chance they're going to suspend your account. And if they suspend your account, yes, you can get it back. I've seen most people that have gotten their account suspended get their account back for drop shipping, but it's a hassle, it's a pain. There's a whole process you have to go through. So for beginners, I wouldn't recommend that. I would stick with eBay and Facebook Marketplace. But if you want a third marketplace, you can do Amazon, but do Amazon FBA. And that's what my buddy Steve is going to come on and talk about next week. Um, without a doubt, that I think his method is the best way I have found to do Amazon FBA. I tried other stuff and really kind of got stuck with it and didn't get anywhere. His method was the only thing that worked for me. And I didn't have a lot of time to devote to it. I was doing drop shipping on multiple platforms. I was at this YouTube channel. I was more involved with Instagram and TikTok then. What else was I doing? Helping all my students as well. Uh, you know, a lot on my plate. And so I started that as well. And even though I wasn't putting a lot of time into it, it still worked, which is the point I'm trying to make. So um, if you want to do Amazon, that's what I would recommend. But that does cost money to start up. You have to invest in inventory up front, um, but not as much as something like private label. So again, he's going to come on next week and, and talk about that. So it'll be pretty exciting. Stacy says, I'm having trouble hiding my profile on Facebook Marketplace. I would like to list items with my first name only. Is that possible? So Stacy, there's, there's two ways you can do this. Um, the first way I, I haven't tested, honestly, but um, I'm assuming this will work. Anytime you list an item on Facebook Marketplace, anyone browsing Facebook Marketplace and 
if they open up your specific listing and scroll down, they will see your name on there. So that name is pulled from your Facebook profile. So theoretically, again, I haven't done this, but theoretically, one thing you could do is change the name of your Facebook profile. That's the only way to change that. Now, the good news is that if you're trying to hide your name from, or trying to hide from your friends and family that you're doing uh, drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace, when you list an item on Facebook Marketplace, there's actually an option, a toggle that says, hey, I wanna hide this for my friends and family so that anyone that you're friends with on Facebook Marketplace can't see your listings. That's what I do because especially when I first got started, I was like, I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm like a little embarrassed and I'm trying this. So let me just hide it from my friends and family. So that's what I did. But if you want your name to be completely gone, uh, the only way I could think of to do that is to change the name of your, of your Facebook profile. Try drop shipping on YouTube. It's about my name on YouTube. What? Does this mean we can disregard the Vero warning on products that are not branded? No, no, I never said that. Not at all. If 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 an item pops up and it says it's Vero, don't list it. It's not worth the risk. Cyber Player says, "What was the best thing that happened to you when you were drop shipping from Shopify?" Um, well, I've never drop shipped from. I think maybe you mean to Shopify. What do you mean the best thing that happened to me? I started to drop, I tried drop shipping on Shopify back in 2016 um, and never had success with it. So I guess the best thing that happened was that I learned about drop shipping and then found eBay drop shipping, which does work. So I was able to see success with that. Andrew says, a customer said they never received their item. So I uploaded the Amazon TBA tracking number to eBay and to my surprise, eBay actually showed the tracking details. Every scam was listed. How? Yeah, so most people don't know this, but when you have an Amazon TBA tracking number, you can technically upload it into eBay. It's one of the options for tracking, but I advise against doing that. I, I, I suggest you don't do that um, so that they know or they don't, you know, they don't see that you're using Amazon FBA to fill or Amazon to fill your orders. Um, that's why we convert them. So yes, it works. I would advise against doing it. Um, my theory as to why, why do they make it available? Um, yeah, they started this a couple of years ago. Um, my theory is, Maybe they did do it for us as drop shippers. Or there's a lot of people who cross sell. So there's people like, let's say you're selling these water bottles. You might have 20 of them. So you send them into Amazon FBA. But at the same time, you, you cross list them onto eBay. And if someone buys them from you on eBay, well, you can't ship it from your house because they're at Amazon FBA. So you can actually have Amazon ship it to your eBay customer instead. So my theory is like, that's why they did it, but um, it's just a theory. So for now, I just say, you know, we're just gonna use the uh, Blue Care Express and other like Aqualine tracking numbers instead. Eddie's Hub says, I just reopened my store after many months of, of taking a break. Um, now I reopen, but just kind of confused on how to sell more items. Yeah. I mean, um, if you just got started back up, you know, first delete all your items from your store. Um, if you took several months off, probably all those listings are stale and old for items that aren't popular anymore. Um, and I would kind of start fresh with some new items, you know, do product research, figure out what's selling now, sell those same or similar products and just try to list more into your store. And I wanna go back and say, Andrew, I wouldn't, you know, I don't wanna scare you. I'm sure your account's okay just uploading one of these tracking numbers from, from Amazon, uh, you know, the Amazon Logistics TBA number. Um, but I would just kind of advise against doing it in the future.
Um, well, my question for you is, James, he says, eBay, when eBay asks for invoices, how do we produce them? So my question is, did they ask for that? Because I haven't heard of very many people having this happen to them. So did this happen to you? Or are you just, are you just kind of um, fearful that it might happen? Cassie says, I'm trying to find videos on wholesale. I need help with the FTP. Thank you for your time and have a blessed day. FTP, what does FTP stand for? Sounds familiar. I mean, I'm thinking, I think I'm thinking of something from cycling, like your functional training FTP. Let me look this up. Well, while I'm doing that, oh, the FTP, right, right. So FTP is, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's like a way that, um, like you create like a file that, that, you know, these wholesale companies, they'll create these files that have all the information about their products that are in stock. So we'll say things like, uh, which SKUs are in stock, how many are available, what the price is. That's kind of like their way of automating stuff. Um, so let me kind of break down this question for you real quick. The, I don't have many videos about wholesale drop shipping on YouTube. That's because quite honestly, nobody watches them. People just aren't interested in them. That's the truth. But inside my course, my eBay course, you get access to a whole separate course, a whole course about wholesale drop shipping. So if you join my eBay course, which teaches you how to drop ship from like Walmart, Amazon, and eBay, you get a second course for free, which teaches you how to do wholesale drop shipping. All that information is there. But again, I just don't have much on YouTube. The whole FTP thing is honestly something I don't fully understand, um, like how to get it to work uh, besides just looking at it as, as like a CSV file. Uh, I know there's ways you can kind of like implement it into different software so you can kind of have things that are automated, but I never really understood it. I never really saw the need to understand it because when you're dealing with wholesale suppliers, the prices of their products don't change as often as prices on Walmart or Amazon or Home Depot. And they also don't tend to go out of stock as often. So I'm not as worried about that stuff as I am if I'm using like retail suppliers. Uh, yeah, so Eddie's asking about like how to drop ship from like Italy. And again, I don't really have that experience because I'm, you know, a U.S. citizen based here in the United States. I'm like, that's where my background is. And I sell to the U.S. market. So I don't really have experience selling to like uh, people in Italy, for instance. Gerardo says, I eventually want to get into Amazon FBA. Do you think eBay dropshipping is a good leadoff for that as well as for other platforms? Why or why not? Yeah, I, I do. So I've had several, many students who have who have talked to me or chatted with me, emailed me and said, hey, like I really want to do Amazon FBA. Like that's that's my dream to like own a brand there or to get onto Amazon. But I just don't have any money to get started. And so they get started with eBay dropshipping or Facebook Marketplace dropshipping really to build up that revenue, that money that they can then invest into FBA. And some of them did do that. And some of them stuck with drop shipping because they're like, hey, this is working. I'm not going to risk trying something new that I don't know is going to work for me. So you can kind of make that decision later on for yourself. But the important thing is that it does allow you to get started pretty easily for very low upfront cost and then to build up that money that you can then invest somewhere else if you want to or not. Um, that choice is up to you. And in addition to that, you're going to build skills, right? You're going to learn product research. Um, it's not going to be directly correlated, but there's a lot of the skills that will transfer over. You're going to understand the market better. You can understand what times of the year get busier and different things like that. Jonathan says, if you find a wholesaler to, to prove to drop ship from, can I always use their photos off their site? Do I have to ask before doing so? Um, yeah, I've 
I can't, it doesn't make sense for them not to allow you to do that. So if you find a wholesaler that uh, approves you, they're also approving you to use their images and you know their products and their product descriptions. It, it wouldn't make sense for them to, to limit you in that regard. Uh, answer this before, so scrub back, but if you use Zeek Analytics and AutoDS, it's going to alert you to most of them, but not all Vero items. Okay. Odima says, how do we receive customer payments when they buy products via Shopify store? So just full transparency, I don't sell on Shopify at the moment. I mostly focus on, well, yeah, I only focus on selling on marketplaces, eBay, Amazon, Facebook marketplace. So, but I, but I have experience selling on Shopify in the past. So when someone buys something you on, something from you on Shopify, you have to set up beforehand how you receive payments. So you can set up PayPal so they can pay through through PayPal. You can also set up Stripe um, or maybe they have something like it. So basically they pay with their credit card and it goes to your bank account. So it's all done through that. Yeah, this is true that the Facebook shipping option is available in other countries. But one thing I've seen is that it, it seemed like it was available in like Canada and then like taken away. And I just don't have the experience selling in the UK. I, I don't know what suppliers there are in the UK, if they're good suppliers, because I, I don't use them. So yeah, this the, the methods, I always tell people that because I just want to be like honest with them. The methods I teach here on YouTube and in my courses, I know it works for people that are here in the United States selling to US market, okay? I've seen it work dozens and hundreds of times for people. Does it work outside the United States, the same methods? Yes, I've seen it work for people outside the United States many times as well, but there will be more of a learning curve for you, right? There's there's more homework you have to do to kind of bridge that gap between what I'm teaching and how you can use that in your home country. And I just wanna be fully transparent about that because I don't have that experience to be able to bring to you. Gerardo says, I am currently using Amazon as my only supplier, which is fine, Gerardo. You, It's fine to have just one supplier. My eBay dropshipping store really took off when I focused in on one supplier, which is Home Depot at the time. Really understood it and learned how it worked. I added more later, but I really spent time just kind of mastering that one supplier. So it's totally fine just be working with one supplier. But if you want to add something like Walmart, yeah, start exploring it. Just try it out. Just start adding some products and see how it works for you. Mm -hmm. AMR says, my virtual assistant has issues processing orders on Home Depot. What's the best VPN to not cause payment errors? By the way, the card billing information is correct. And I can process without any issues. More VPN issues. So yeah, homedepot.com, you can access that website from outside the United States. So all my virtual assistants have always had problems accessing homedepot.com. Um, they've had no issues accessing the website with pretty much any VPN. But again, many of those VPNs, when they actually go to check out, won't, uh, you know, Home Depot detects the VPN or something and it won't let them complete the checkout. So... What I found is that we they are able to complete the checkout with gift cards. You can also set up auto ordering through certain websites like AutoDS to do it for you. Um, so that's pretty much the best way of doing it. Um, yeah, or you can use IP Burger, which we've had a lot more luck with. The shipping option is not on Facebook Marketplace, which we, we've covered a bit before. It's not something you can just like get when you want it. If you have an, a Facebook account already, because Facebook Marketplace is tied to your profile. If you have a Facebook account already that you've had for a while, use that account 
because chances are that account already has the shipping option uh, enabled or the option to enable it. If you create a brand new Facebook account, there's like an over a 90% chance that it won't have the shipping option right away. There, there, there have been exceptions to that, but most of the time, if you start a new Facebook account, that account will not have the shipping option or the option for the shipping option. So use your old account. And if you have to create a new account because you never had a Facebook account, then you just have to wait. You got to give it time before it becomes unlocked. And there's nothing else you can really do about it. Can you sell both retail and wholesale items on one eBay store? Yeah, of course. As long as you're organized with it, um, it's fine to do that. And that's what I recommend for most people. I wouldn't, for most people, I wouldn't recommend creating multiple eBay stores uh, if you're just trying something like wholesale. But hey, if you're doing retail and you're seeing success with that and you start trying wholesale and then that starts doing well for you, yeah, sure. Then maybe create a second eBay store and move all your wholesale products to that second store just to kind of keep things separate and more organized. Sound says, what about drop shipping on Macari and Etsy? So as I mentioned before, I've tried drop shipping on many different marketplaces. Macari is honestly one I haven't tried, um, but Etsy is one I tried. And I don't, I don't talk here on the channel about every experiment that I run. Um, I started a whole video about Etsy drop shipping. I was, I was very excited for it. I thought, you know, I really thought it would work, to be honest. Um, started putting up products really excited for it. I couldn't sell anything. I didn't sell a single thing on Etsy. And I'm like, I can't figure it out. I don't know why. I know people are doing it, but I didn't see any luck with it. And also kind of stinks with Etsy. It costs money for every single listing that you make. So, you know, if you're not seeing luck or success with it right away, you're just, you know, it is costing you money to list all those items. Not much. And it was definitely worth it if it's going to work or to at least see if it works. But I couldn't sell anything. I, I really tried. So for me, Etsy didn't work. But I also understand that Etsy is a very different marketplace from eBay and Facebook and Amazon. You know, it's more like vintage homemade goods. And I don't have much experience with that. So maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But uh, I wasn't able to do it. And Macari, I have not tried. I do know for Macari, from everything I've heard, they're really not dropship friendly at all. Um, so that always kept me away. And, you know, I've heard that Etsy isn't the most dropship friendly either, but I also heard that people do it. So that's why I was willing to try it, but couldn't get it to work. Maybe I'll revisit it. No, never, never ignore the Vero, Vero thing. Um, yeah, so many things can go wrong with Shopify. Um, I'm drop shipping on Facebook and eBay for like a month, doing the same listings on both. eBay already sold four grand, but same listings on Facebook, not selling. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Well, looking at looking at that, I would say stick to eBay, you know, and double down on that because obviously you're seeing success there. So if you're seeing success there, double down on it, do more there. Focus more on, on adding products to your eBay store and finding the right products to sell because it's obviously working for you. So I would double down on that. What state do you live in in the US? You know, I, I, I normally, you know, I've, I talk about it here on this channel. I've mentioned where I live. For some reason, when someone asks me like flat out, I feel very hesitant to, to reveal where I live. <laughs> I got one through the, the image warning I got went through Zeek Analytics and AutoDS. Small company reported the item. Have you heard of this before? So I'm I'm not so it sounds like Zeek Analytics and AutoDS didn't warn you. And that happens. Like I said, those warnings are only 90% accurate. 
it really is is stupid. There's no universal list for Vero. Um, eBay has a list on their website. It's it's very incomplete. So AutoDS and Zeek Analytics have taken those lists from from eBay, put it into their system. But also, anytime a seller on eBay that works with Zeek or AutoDS gets a Vero warning, they take the brand, they put it into their system so that the next time someone tries to list one of those brands, that warning pops up, right? So they have a much better or much more complete list than like eBay themselves has. But they really, they should just tell us the whole list. How do we go about signing up for your class? Just go to dropshippingtitans.com and on that page, you can click through to either the eBay course or the Facebook course. So that's dropshippingtitans.com. My pleasure. It's probably because you're using Prime, which you're not supposed to do. JS Dropship says, I'm based in the US, but I live in Asia for part of the year. Any risk of getting my eBay or Facebook banned if selling from selling if I use a VPN? Uh, possibly. Um, usually if you start in, like if you set up your account here in the United States and use it for several months and then go travel somewhere, I've that's what I've done without a VPN and I've been fine, okay? Um, what you might want to do if you want to be careful is buy a dedicated static VPN from IP Burger and use that. That way, every time you log in, you're logging in from the same IP address. They're going to see that whether you're here in the United States where everything's cool and you know everything looks normal, no red flags, and then you go overseas and you're using the same IP address again. So that, that could be a, a level or layer of protection for you. Do you have any videos that cover sales tax when drop shipping? I do, you know, look around for them. I don't like to give too much tax advice, but generally speaking, eBay and Facebook Marketplace, they they handle sales tax for us. So, they're required to by law in most states. So, when customers order stuff on those marketplaces, eBay, for instance, will charge them extra for sales tax, take that sales tax, and then send it to whatever state needs to get it. Um, and they, yeah, so they take care of that for you. Gerardo says, it's been a couple of days now without sales. Sorry to hear that, man. I know that feeling, you know, it sucks. Especially in your situation, where you had a couple of returns, so you feel like you're being penalized for it. And it always kind of feels that way. I, I've experienced that too. It's like, wow, I just had a couple of returns and now I'm not getting any sales. Um, it can feel that way. And I just, you know, I think it's kind of like our minds are messing with us. You know what I mean? I wouldn't stress out about it. I would keep going. And I think, because for myself, every time it happened, my sales would go back up. You know, I just had to be a little bit patient with it. So I know that feeling, man. I've been there, but you know, keep working because I think you're, you know, for myself, I knew I, I figured out I was just getting in my own head about it. All right, what's up, Stacy? Having a little trouble with some items not selling. Um, yeah, it can be tricky at first to really to kind of get the product research down. Uh, glad you're loving the course, by the way. It can be tricky to get the product research down and to really understand it and to master it. And it's just like what I was saying with Gerardo. You know, you have to be you have to be more patient with yourself. You know, it's a skill. It took me, gosh, six or seven months before I really got product research down. But once I did, sales really took off for me. So, you know, be patient with yourself, okay? Um, try different things with it. And you know, ask the community for help. You you can post in the Facebook group saying, "Hey, you know, this is this is an item that I listed. This is why I listed it. Ask for feedback from people. I'll give it if no one else does. I'm sure other people in the group will as well. 
So we want to make sure you do well. Yeah, we use AutoDS's full API. Yes, Gerardo is correct. Gerardo says, correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, there are Vero items and there are Vero words. For example, an iPhone case, Apple iPhone is a Vero brand, but is it okay to sell a generic iPhone case? So there's a couple of things I want to unpack there. Um, there are Vero brands, which we've talked about a few times in this, in this live. Those are brands you shouldn't be selling, but there are also problematic words. They're not technically Vero words, but we can call it that just for sake of convenience. These are words that um, raise a red flag. And if you try to list an item that has that word in the title, AutoDS is going to say, hey, that's a Vero word. It's technically not a Vero word. It's just a problematic word. Example, knife. A knife, you are technically allowed to sell on eBay, but there's risks with it. Um, so if you try to list an item in the title, it says knife, AutoDesk is going to say, hey, you know, be careful here. You might not want to sell a knife. Um, I think they're, they, I, I've never drop shipped adult items, you know, like adult toys, but I'm pretty sure eBay like doesn't really allow you to sell them anymore from what I remember hearing. So maybe if they see one of those words, you can imagine what some of those words are in the title. AutoDesk will say, hey, that's like a Vero word. You might not want to list that. Um, yeah, so that's when it might come up. Now, the last part of your question is, can you sell a generic iPhone case? So the it might be a, like a, a, a case that fits the iPhone, but it's not sold by Apple, right? It's like you can buy it off AliExpress or something or Amazon. So in that situation, technically that's not a Vero brand, but the title does say iPhone in it. I, I get worried, honestly, about putting major brand names into any title or description. So like iPhone, Nike, any of those. I just don't think it's worth the risk. Um, I've always avoided doing it as much as I can because I just don't want that risk of them coming out and saying, hey, you can't even use our trademarked name or whatever the case may be. Yeah, generally, if those invoices you're going to have to get from wholesale suppliers. Um, if you, if you have, if they ask for it, but again, it's extremely rare where I've actually seen them ask for it. Um, and, and a lot of times people who again, aren't based in the USA. My pleasure, Stacy. Yes, it is Prince. Yes, it is. All right. So got through all the questions. Thanks everyone for, for some amazing questions this week. I want to give some shout outs. Some people who asked some great questions this week. So Gerardo, thanks. Asked like amazing questions this week. Uh, Stacy, appreciate you being here as well. Uh, who else asked some really great questions? JMC was here asking some good questions. So I appreciate all of you. Um, Cyber player. Thanks for the great questions. Appreciate all of you, but um, it's nice when I just have like a nice stream of great questions to really make the hour fly by. So I appreciate you guys so much. Um, if you guys have any questions that didn't get answered, make sure to come to the next live Q&A. I do them every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also in the description underneath the like button are a bunch of free guides. I put together all these PDFs. I have two about eBay drop shipping, one about Facebook marketplace drop shipping. Check those out. It's completely free. You get some free information um, that you can download all about drop shipping. So make sure to use them and um, I'll see you next week for the next live Q&A. Have a good week.